go back to the Civilopedia here. What was I looking for? Oh, yeah, the city improvements. This is important. So I mentioned in the review of Civilization 1 that you do not have capitalization in the original Civilization. This essentially converts production into tax revenue. So when you run out of things to build in a city, this is a very handy thing to have that you don't have in the original Civilization. And then you have other upgrades that are familiar. The Coastal Fortress is not in the original Civilization, however. That's to stop attacks from ships that try to bombard you. The airport allows you to build veteran air units, because in the original Civilization, one of the things that I glossed over was that the barracks is one of the most important city improvements, because the barracks allows you to build so-called veteran or well-trained military units. In the original Civilization, that would be any unit. But in Civilization II, it's only for land units, because your air units, to be veteran, have to be trained with an airport, and your naval units have to be trained with a port facility, right here. So that you get the port facility by developing amphibious warfare, and you get the airport by developing the radio. And there are some other interesting things you don't have in the original civilization here. For example, if I can find it, where is it? Oh yeah, the supermarket. The supermarket's very important because in the later stages of Civilization I, food supply becomes a bit of a problem because your population starts to outrun the food supply, basically in Malthusian fashion. In Civilization II, you have the supermarket, which enables you to increase your food production to meet modern population levels. And you need refrigeration as a civilization advanced to build this. The superhighways, we'll look at them here. All squares in the city's radius with roads or railroads produce 50% more trade. My understanding is these also make your supermarkets more effective. But another realistic feature of them is that they drive up your pollution, which they don't mention here. Which is just like the real thing. The supermarket allows squares in the city's radius with the farmland improvement, which is a step above irrigation. So you don't irrigation twice. There it says that, irrigated twice, to produce 50% more food, which is quite significant, actually. Though that will, in the short term, solve your food supply problem. Oh, why does it keep showing? This is one thing I don't like about the Civilopedia, is that if you say close, it closes the whole thing, instead of just the entry that you're looking up. Then you have the sewer system, which is another thing that helps you increase a city's size. Oh yeah, and the solar plant. That's an awfully nice thing to have, because the solar plant increases factory output. Really, what it does is increases production. And as it says, it's cleaner than all other forms of power. So you have less pollution generated by building up your cities. There we go. Go back. Finally found a good way of doing this. They have the police station, too. The police station is of limited use, actually. Decreases unhappiness caused by troops away from city by one. And if I'm remembering right, it only works with certain kinds of government. The prerequisite is communism, but under communism, you strangely don't need it, even though in real life, communist regimes tend to have extensive policing apparatus. It applies, I think, to Republican government and possibly democracy as well. I, I've forgotten, actually. It doesn't give you enough information, in my opinion. Let's see if the description gives us more. There we go. So, yeah, so this is just a generic 
very minimal history of policing in the modern sense. It's not actually useful for gameplay, unfortunately. If you go online, you can find the answer to those questions, actually. The offshore platform increases your production levels. You get that with the miniaturization advance. The SAM missile battery you get with the rocketry civilization advance. So it's a more useful advance in Civilization 2 than in Civilization 1 because instead of just getting space flight and nuclear missiles, you get cruise missiles and SAM missile batteries. Yeah, and that's basically it. And the harbor increases food production. So it's a, an alternative to a granary if you have a coastal city. You need the seafaring improvement for that, which is related to the pottery improvement. So it is, in a sense, a step up from the granary. But it is possible to have both in a city, and I have built a number of cities that have them. Basically, as the city grows, you need as much food production and security as possible. So the rest of this is familiar from the previous version. And they don't mention anything here. Maybe maybe terrain types is what I'm looking for. Let's see if it has what I want. Well, no. I was hoping for the improvements outside of cities that you can buy with, or actually build. You don't buy them. You build them with your settlers and with your engineers. Let's see if this gives us any help here. Game concepts? Yes. So you can build an air base to put military air units in a convenient location. So it says strategically placed air bases effectively extend the range of these units, allowing them to operate farther from friendly cities and carriers. I've also found that you can paradrop paratroopers from them too. And the fortresses are still around. I didn't demonstrate these in the original civilization, but they allow you to better fortify a unit in a location outside of a city. So they're a little bit like city walls, but they're for units basically fortified outside of cities. And let's see if they have anything else special here that I forgot. It doesn't look like it. I think all of these are equivalent to the original civilization. Airlifting, of course, is something that's introduced with airports and air bases. I don't remember if you could airlift into an airbase, but I know that you could airlift from city to city with airports. So that's a faster way to move a unit forward or to another continent, especially than putting it on a transport ship. Actually, we should look at the naval units. That was one other thing I forgot. Military units. I mentioned the destroyer and the Aegis cruiser. The older ones are significant, too. Actually, you also have helicopters, too. The helicopters can operate over a much longer range than other air units, but the catch is that they behave a lot like land units and they acquire hit points just from being outside of a city. So beware, they're not invincible. <laughs> but And they can invade cities, which other air units can't. So, on to the naval units.